have experienced a very sad loss this past day. Five hours worth of drawing in video format, all corrupted. And now I have to remake almost an eight hour YouTube endeavor. <laughs> Let's get started, I guess. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Carter Sandvin, and this is the channel for Sandbox Illustration. So I need to explain myself. I did a video yesterday, or I recorded a video yesterday, I should say, and I was actually covering how I draw my art creation process, and I was going to use it as a tutorial video, plus me actually giving you guys a proper let's draw. So I made a drawing, and everything was going extremely well until it came to the coloring process, which is on my computer. Because that I recorded with Bandicam. And it was about five hours worth of footage. And the entire thing was corrupted. So all I had of this video was me planning the sketch, me doing the line work of the sketch, and then the final product. Because of that, I just said, fuck it. And I deleted all of the footage, deleted the entire video, and I was just like, I'm just gonna start over. But I did get something out of it. I actually made this piece right here, and I'm actually very happy with it. If you guys don't know, the context behind this piece is back in 2017, I actually made a drawing, and it was called Zeke Was Here, because it was actually just this. It was just a guy sitting on like a concrete block or something like that, smoking a cigarette with the cityscape in the background with the sunset and there was graffiti in the background and on the graffiti it actually said Zeke was here and so I called the piece Zeke was here. The piece was not that good though and in fact I actually remade it two years later in 2019. I have both drawings up on the screen right now just to show you. They're not bad pieces but they really show all of the issues that I was having with my drawings which was not understanding perspective and depth and environments and all that. Both of them look very bland in terms of their environment. The figures look pretty good, but it looks like they were just given a backdrop to sit in front of. And I wanted to fix that, so I wanted to remake the piece, and I'm extremely happy with this piece. It actually looks like he's in this environment. Like, it doesn't just look like he was put in front of a screen. It actually looks like he's sitting on this sidewalk, which is under this bridge, because you've got the composition of the bridge going towards the sunset, which I really love. You have the shadows and you have the angles. There are a couple of spots where it gets clunky, you know? I'm still struggling with perspective a little bit. That's, that's my biggest one, is perspective, I'd say. But I'm extremely happy with this piece. It's a shame that I couldn't keep the footage, but I did get something out of it. I got this piece. So, rest in peace. I was trying to figure out, I was like, okay, I still have to make this video. I still have to make my how I draw. Worst case scenario, I have my video and also a new sketch. So right now, I think I'm just gonna go through my summarized drawing process with you. I'll get more into detail with it when we actually get into the drawing itself. I actually learned this heavily from Jazza. He was the one that really taught me to plan for my sketches and like do brainstorming beforehand and then translate that into a refined piece. And he has his process. At one point, I actually bought his book. I bought creating characters, which I love this book. It's been incredibly helpful, especially through my art journey. This was one of the books that I read to really get some tips and knowledge. He has this four-step process for drawing. His process actually goes discover, design, develop, and then deliver. I kind of tweaked it just to make it my own process, and so I really just do brainstorming, designing, and then finalizing. So if you open this up, one of the sketches that I plan on doing at some point is I want to do a fan art of the main cast of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And if you look at the sketches for it, they're very simple because like, I don't need to come up with any new ideas myself. I already have the designs to work with. So I was really just kind of getting them down onto paper and getting a feel for how I would draw them personally. So if you look through these, their planning pages are very simple. It's really just outfit, body build, and face design. But then, if you get into original characters, you're going to have a page that looks much more like this, where you are playing with multiple face designs, you're playing with outfits, you're playing with multiple 
details on the body, but this was what I spent seven hours doing yesterday. This is the figure in the Zeke was here drawing. This was all the stuff that I had for planning. God, it makes me so sad because the video actually went pretty damn well. But hey, this video is going to go a thousand times better. I promise. You can count on me. Look, look me in the eye. It's going to happen. So today, we are going to be doing another sketch like that. Trying to figure out something that we can draw to give you an actual let's draw, along with teaching you my process. So the brainstorm section is where I find all my source material. At this point, I haven't really put a uh, pencil to paper at all. That is in the design phase, which is what this sketchbook is. And then the finalizing phase is when I have decided what my sketches are. I've decided what my designs are. And then I go slap it on a piece of paper with some pencil and ink. And then I go and color it on the computer because that's how I color my official pieces for my brand. So right here we have my entire list of sketch prompts. These all will eventually be created on the channel. Uh, but there are some of these that take more backstory, more work, more planning. So I'd rather have some of these just be their own videos rather than tying them in with the How I Draw video. So honestly, out of all of these, I think I actually want to go with Arch. It's going to take a long time because there are uh, 10 people that I have to draw for it. But it's going to be very fun for me to play with designs because I can do literally anything that I want to for these to make them look any way that I can and take certain features of the actual people and really amplify those to make them a very unique character. And it'll be fun to play with backgrounds and lighting and environments. So I'm going to start by making sort of a mock board of inspiration. So it's going to be all of us kids. I'm going to have a picture of each of us. And then I'm going to try and find a feature from all of us that I can work with to really amplify and make a character out of that. And then I'm going to go through and look at different action figures in the past and different characters from, say, comics or video games, really come up with some cool features, cool ideas, and just go from there. And I will be talking about more of the design process as it is going on through a little voiceover, and I don't know if I have much else to say. So let's try and draw Arch. So as you guys know already, my creation process for art encompasses brainstorm, design, and finalize. Brainstorm is all of the research that you basically do beforehand to try and get an idea of what you're going to put into your sketchbook. Design is all of the rough planning, so that'll be any experimenting that you do within just your standard sketchbook. And then finalize takes in everything that comes into the final product, whether that be pencil work, ink work, coloring, all of that. So now we are finally getting into the sketchbook and the designing process of this entire artwork. Now, as you can see, I like to use just standard pencils for my sketchbooks, A, because your sketchbooks don't need to look too pretty in terms of their overall look. You just need to get the main point across so you can use really any material you want and it makes use for a lot of extra wooden pencils that I have laying around my art office. Now a point that I've made in the past which I didn't do with this piece just because I already had an idea of what I was going to design when I went into it but please if you're going to do the planning for a sketch like this experiment with multiple faces and multiple designs of features. Even if you like one that you just made, make more because either you can find an even better design than the first one later on, or you can always just go back to the first design. It never hurts to experiment. If you guys have noticed those little figures that I'm putting clothes on in the sketchbook here, that's what I kind of call my mannequin diagram. Not really anything special there, it's just a little figure of a body that I draw and I use that to put on all of my outfits so whenever I'm trying to come up with designs for clothing for characters I'll draw multiple little mannequins that I could put the clothes on to see what I like and then once I have a character where I am pretty much set on the designs that I want from them as you guys know I highlight any body features with red so that would be face hair even things like tattoos uh, anything that's an inanimate object, I highlight with blue, 
and then all environments I highlight with green, which you will see towards the end of the sketchbook. Alright, wow, I've been trying for so fucking long. Um, as you can see, a day has passed, but I have done all of the plan sketching that I possibly could for this. So we have all of the characters here. That's my character, my siblings, and then obviously just all my cousins. I love the idea of Taylor's character having a hellhound. What I tried to go for, like I said, was I wanted to kind of assign everybody a role in the group, and then I wanted to find one feature that all of them kind of have within themselves. So then I would use that and expand on it to liven up their character and make them a bit more unique. I said it already in the audio recording, but these two, it was pretty hard just because they're so young, you know? Randall's only nine years old and Gray's only four. so. They're not really at that point yet to have like one thing. You wouldn't be able to see, I don't know, a, a shirt or a pair of shoes and be like, oh yeah, Randall or oh yeah, Gray. But I think I made it work for those two. And it's actually kind of cool because this story is actually starting to be a lot more developed than it was originally. Originally, it was I was just going for like the badass action character thing, but I actually turned it into something that I think is pretty cool. This is all actually like a covert organization where everybody has something to do within it you know you have the leader which is taylor you have spencer who kind of plays like the the judge slash scare tactics guy you have the marksman you have the assassin you have a thief you have the the demolition guys you have an adventurer one that goes and like seeks out new missions or something like that you have the negotiator you have the muscle you know it's become something so cool and I love like actually seeing this group and seeing an organization that has a mission. If you guys don't know, that like I'm gonna draw it where there's like a fire going over there. Maybe not like in the shot, but there will be a strong orange glow coming from that way to symbolize a fire going on and everyone's gonna be a little beat up and stuff. But I like the idea that everyone is staring at their victim, you know, or at least their enemy. Uh, the person that they had to take down for this mission. They're all staring at them. That's why Baylor is pointing the gun and Spencer standing there with his knife out. Oh, this is so cool to me. I think it's going to look amazing. Uh, the coloring is definitely going to take very long. In fact, actually, the next part of this might take up to tomorrow, you know? And so you might, you might see me in another outfit. One of the things that took so long with this is because I had to go back and forth so much. I hope it doesn't show too much. 
in the actual editing process when it comes to time lapsing these videos. But what was going on was I was creating these characters, and then like halfway through, I figured out something that I would work with, and then it's like, wait a minute, but how am I going to work with that? So I would stop from drawing, then I would go and like look up photo references and all that to create that stuff. Tip for the future, which I'm going to put right here, this is my next drawing tip. Try and come up with all of your source material beforehand, so then this process doesn't take you two days like it did me. Unless you're on a time crunch, it doesn't really matter, but for something especially like making a video, make sure that, you know, you have all of your cards on the table before you actually start creating the character. So like, I, I needed to find something for these guys, and honestly, in my videos, minutes on end were just me looking at my phone trying to find something. The one that took the most time for me was researching Cavaliers. That is the team name of my cousin Hunter's school. So I was researching what a Cavalier was and then they're like royalist warrior things. So I was trying to play off of that and I think I did a pretty good job, but then I was like, okay, well now I need something else. And so there was a lot of time with a lot of these that I was just looking at photos and trying to figure out something to work with. You know, a lot of these guys I haven't seen in a while, you know, and I don't know too well, you know, like I don't know that much about their personal life just because I'm not around them that often. So trying to find something to actually work with was hard, but I think every single character was given something to work with that was not too derivative, nothing too stereotypical. Like that was a big thing. In fact, I actually tried to do that with the girls this time. But the biggest thing that I tried to do with the girls in this drawing was I tried to avoid any of them having anything in terms of like a sex appeal, you know what I mean? Because that unfortunately gets done a lot with female characters. Not unfortunately, it has its place, but also I think that that's just kind of an easy thing to turn to, you know, like guy you make him a fighter and a woman you make her a seducer you know it's tale as old as time and I tried to I tried to mix it up and go against the grain a little bit and I think I pulled it off to where none of these characters at least the female ones look too much like a sex object or 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 like a, a femme fatale you know what I mean and so with that you know I tried to avoid like scandalous clothing certain positions that would be that would be assumptive of anything. And I'm really happy with how it turned out, you know? I, I broke the mold, I think, and I think it looks very cool. And you know, like, at first I was wondering, maybe I should just make them just like normal people? But then, as it went on, I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna throw every single option that I can at them. So like, the negotiator has like a steampunk look to her, and there's a literal hellhound. And Taylor's character basically looks like a like a queen. Like I was going for like a a witchcraft sort of feel with her outfit, you know, more mystical. I mean, you've got a kid who was caught in an explosion, and I didn't want to hold anything back with these at the, at a certain point. I was like, fuck it. These are going to be the most epic characters that I can make them, and I think they turned out pretty dang good. I like too. In these, you kind of see like a lot of different genres sort of being played at the same time, you know, like I said, with Taylor's character you get more of like a fantasy mystical feel and then with Roper, or sorry, with Roper you get kind of a, kind of a steampunk look. With Sydney's you get a post-apocalyptic. Uh, Hunter's is more like mythical. I actually took some inspiration from the Disney Hercules look, or at least like inspiration for coming up with ideas. I'm not saying that anything on him really looks like that. Uh, but then you got like modern characters where like Baylor just has guns, you know? Brayden's character almost kind of reminded me of an anime character in some ways, you know? Like, like he's an assassin but he's still wearing like the nice clean suit. And then Spencer's character plays on horror, which I thought was very fun, especially because he's such a fan of horror movies. This is the layout of the environment and each ridge. So I put these shadows in there to show kind of like how far back it is. If it's a small shadow, that means that it's like closest. And then as it gets bigger, you're getting further back. So this rock right here is behind this one. Another tip that I think that I could put in this video is if you're gonna really work with an environment, make sure that you are actually working with the environment. I think one of the issues that I've had in the past with some of these drawings is I've tried to build the, the environment around the characters even though that's not how environments work you should obviously like don't 
just make the environment, obviously. But once you're done designing your characters, go go on and design your environment and then work with it, you know? Like, I wanted to make an environment that the characters could work with instead of just building an environment around them, if that makes any sense. That's a really good way for your drawings to feel 3D, most, in, most of all, but also just real, you know? You see them standing in this world you don't see the world around them i think that's one of the issues that i've had in the past with my drawings looking like they just have backdrops is because i would pretty much finalize the drawing and then put in an environment afterwards after like it was already inked and everything and it looked that was one of the reasons why it looked off most of the time i didn't build a world for the characters to actually be in and you really need to do that but i believe that's all that i have to say for this so i think we can just Get on to finally drawing the piece, inking it, and then coloring it on the computer. Once we actually start, I will get more specific with my details in terms of my actual process for creating the art. But that's all I have to say, so let's keep drawing. This right here is the beginning of the finalization process. So we are gonna start with pencil work. Now, as you can see, I use just regular printer paper for the physical drawing because I'm not gonna be doing any actual coloring on that piece of paper. So it doesn't need to be any high quality or super industrial paper. It can just be standard paper because the coloring process and actually applying that to the drawing is gonna be done on the computer. However, if I am going to color on it, which I will most likely use my Copics for, I have Expressit Blending Card that I color that on, which was built specifically for Copic markers, actually. When it comes to actually drawing with the pencil on these pieces, I try to use a fine mechanical pencil so that it's easier to erase later. And also, you want to try to make your pencil lines as fine as possible so that they can be erased later after the ink is applied. I just want to put a note here. I went pretty heavy with my pencil lines on this. This is not the way that you should most ideally do it because I was just trying to figure out, you know, certain poses, certain features, especially with drawing such small characters. I kind of had to get a little rough in there. Also with the foreshortening, I played a lot with the position of the arm. So that took a lot of pencil right there. Luckily, if they all didn't get erased, the Photoshop process gets rid of most of the visible pencil lines. Now this right here is the line work or ink work process. So for this, I actually use Faber-Castell ink pens, the fine liners. I've got a whole set that goes from like an XS to a brush pen, which is very nice to use. And then I also have a mixture of some other ones. Like I have a few Copic multi-liners. I have some Micron fine liners. So as you can see with the figures, I actually like to use a smaller fine liner as I go further back just to make sure that I can really entail all detail that I need to. So the frontmost character is actually done with, I believe it is a 0.1 fine liner or a 0.3. And then Taylor's figure in the back actually is done with a 0.03. So I really tried to go fine with those smaller characters in the picture. Now, obviously with an exception of Taylor since she was drawn with my smallest fine liner possible, uh, I have a few features on a body that I actually use a smaller fine liner for compared to the actual body, as you can see, and that includes stuff like pupils, ears, hair highlights, fingernails, and any extra detail on design. Then once one figure is actually done, I will go through at the end and put a thicker outline around them. This does two things. One, it cleans up all of the line work from each character so it all doesn't look a bit too muddy in terms of its fine detail. And two, it helps to find them as an important figure in the drawing. So you'll see that, say, the mountain won't actually get a thicker outline around it once it's done. Only the characters will, because those are the focus of the piece. And then, near the end, once the piece is finally done with its ink work, I will go through and try to erase all pencil lines if possible.
And finally, the final phase of this drawing, which is coloring on Adobe Photoshop. I just want to note here, I'm still kind of new with Photoshop. I'm not fully attuned with all of the quick tricks with the software. So I'm not the most efficient when it comes to actually coloring this stuff. You'll notice a lot of things where I go back and forth and I'm doing like fine erasing. I'm not that good with Photoshop just yet. So the coloring process takes me a while. But to start these drawings, I'll just go and scan them onto the computer with just my regular printer. So as you saw already, I went and adjusted the picture to make the line work pop just a bit more. And with that, I went into the levels tab and I just kind of played with it, you know? I tried to bring out the black of the line work as much as possible without making it look too grainy or too pixely. And Jazza actually goes greatly into detail on this specific subject in his video, which I will have down in the description for you. Now onto the actual trick to coloring a piece like this when you have a physical picture and you want to try and color into the line work. So if you go and you actually make a copy layer of the background and then create two other layers from there, one is a blank white layer and then another one is just completely blank, which you'll use for coloring and then go back to the background copy layer and then set that to multiply and if you do that then you can fully color into the line work without going on top of it this is a great trick to make it much quicker to actually color on a physical drawing in photoshop again jazz's video covers this greatly he goes much more into the kind of the teacher side of it than i am here but if you want to figure out how to do this process in great depth and detail then I would definitely go check out his video. This is just a little note in case you guys are curious on what my process is later on but when I actually do shadows on characters what I do is I'll go onto the figure and I'll just find a flat dark color whether that be a dark blue or just straight black and I'll color over the figure where the shadows are gonna go and then I'll go and adjust it and actually turn down the opacity so it's kind of a faded layer on top and this is a great way to do cell shading which is actually my preferred method for shading anyways I think those are all the tips that I could give on how I draw let's finish with this drawing shall we
guys, um, ah, the shock is still there. <laughs> In this whole video, I turned this into all of this right here. All of that, which then turned into that, and then turned into this. First off, I just need to get this out of the way because I'm not gonna be talking too much about this for, uh, in a second. But um, I'm glad that I used this video as a little outlet to show my actual drawing process. So then when we go forward with more Let's Draws like this, you'll see everything being done and hopefully you'll understand what my thoughts are when I'm actually doing it in real time. And I'm glad that you guys stuck around for this whole thing and that hopefully you guys listen to those tips and hell, maybe you even apply those to your own drawings. We'll see. But I have to talk about this drawing. So first off, I have to say this entire process took me three days. It is 8.30 of the 23rd, Sunday the 23rd as I'm recording this right now. And I started Friday at like 10 and 11 in the morning. All three phases of this took so long that I just had to do each one on their own day. I couldn't, there was no way that I could continue the entire process all the way through. But I basically just did all the planning in one day, all of the line work in one day, and then I did all of the coloring on Photoshop in one day. Just to note, I do have to apologize because I didn't film the last part of this, which is why you see kind of a break in there, an odd break where you don't see mainly the smoke. You don't see the smoke getting put in. Because the way that I did this was each time while I was drawing this, I would draw for about an hour and then pause and then break and then go and do another one. But I forgot to film the very last of it. So this isn't what you saw when I finished. I want to talk about this drawing for a second. This turned out exponentially better than I ever thought it could have. I got to let you guys know, I actually was really scared when I started this. Once I actually got to starting the line work, actually not even the line work, when I got to the part of creating the environment, that's where I got nervous. Because every character looked great, you know? Every character, when I designed them, I was like, this is solid, there's not a thing that I would change. But then I started with environments and I was trying to figure out different ways that I could do this. What I originally had in mind was I almost wanted all the characters to look like they were like standing above someone on the ground surrounding them. You would see all the characters at a much sharper angle like looking up at you. Or I should say looking down at you like you'd be looking up at them. And I wanted the environment to surround them that way. So that I was drawing all these but just none of them felt that good, you know? And then I was like, okay, well, we'll start playing with rocks and stuff like that and mountains. And this is where I got really nervous because I'm not actually that good at drawing stone, really. So drawing mountains is hard for me. When I actually got to the point of making the environment that I set on, I was like, you know what? It looks good enough. That was like the thought that I had in my mind. Like the thoughts that were going through my head were nothing but it's enough to work with. Even drawing the poses, because I've had issues in the past, especially actually um, the original drawing, characters were put in there, but it just, they looked too crammed. And part of that was, I've said in the past, characters lack depth because they weren't in a real environment. So I was essentially just fitting a character into any space that they could be in. So I did the planning for it. And I was like, it's gonna be okay. You know, it's not gonna be what I envisioned, but we'll, we'll just work with what we got. This, in fact, that's not even the point of the video. The main point of the video is just showing my drawing process. And then I started the line work, especially when I got to the characters that are very small. Taylor's character, especially, was extremely difficult to draw. So was Sydney's character because she had a lot more uh, sporadic detail, you know, like her bangs, you know, it's a lot of strands of hair that go in, in that go in opposite directions and then I drew on the mountain and I was like you know what it looks all right but then today I was creating it and by the way I was having so much fun with Photoshop playing with gradients and opacities and glow effects and blurs and then you guys didn't get to see it but when I got to the end I was experimenting with smoke trying to make that look legit it is beyond anything that I could have ever asked for. 
Ah, <sighs> I'm tearing up. Oh my god. Like I said, I always envision this like you're the person that they're going after, whether it's all like money laundering or it's like a you know a special operations sort of thing and they're maybe trying to take someone down or or steal something from somebody. This group comes after you and you have you know the demolition guys, the ones who literally start doing like earthly destruction to get what they want, you know? Destroying evidence, uh, getting rid of uh, enemies coming in. That is very cool, by the way, that the scars are hidden by the shadow, actually. So then it almost like doesn't catch your eye, but then once you look in and you notice, oh wow, he's got burns right there. By the way, the, the, the burnt metal right there, that's a little, little kudos to me on that one. You have the assassin who likes to do it quietly. And I also like the idea too, because I didn't draw any weapons for him and I was like, he's an assassin, Where, like what would his weapons be? And I like the idea, especially because he has the moth tattoo on his neck. Maybe he wouldn't actually use weapons. Maybe he would do everything completely under a disguise, you know? Like he would only stick with, you know, the poisons or he would leave little like almost like Rube Goldberg-esque bunny trails to make it look like the person killed themselves. Especially with like the symbol of a moth, you know, like coming out most at night. You know, being a nocturnal creature and people not noticing you. Then of course we've got Baylor, the unhinged gunman. I love that. If you guys don't know what this is, I wanted to put on spray paint on his body armor. And so you've got like the green skull right there and you've got a smiley face. This is where it all kind of started off for me that this is an organization because I made Roper's character the negotiator, the one that actually goes and makes the deals with the people, takes care of blackmails, extortions, things like that. And this is the briefcase that she has and I actually came up with the logo for it, which is an arch. Like I wanted it to look kind of like a bridge almost. Speaking of Roper's character, I actually kind of came up with a little backstory for her. So she is the negotiator, you know? And one of the things with her is that she is very stealthy in her operations she comes off as a very like friendly person you know she comes off in a very nice outfit that's kind of her shtick that's how she pulls off so many negotiations is that she comes off as just like a regular lady nothing special with her you know just someone that you find on the street and then she, they come off very friendly and they ask you for a favor then she brings you into the other room, starts her little interrogation. So there was one person in their past that they've had as a target. So they beat them, but they eventually came back. And they like the idea that like this girl right here is gonna go and just dupe more people into horrible extortions and more blackmail. We need to stop them. They knew that the organization was just too strong, so they had to figure out something. So they actually kidnapped her and branded her and left her with markings so that people would always be able to figure out that is the girl from Arch. Watch out for her. So that's why she's got this very nice dolled up appearance right here, but she also has the eye tattoo and the red in the hair. And you have my character right there with the famous anchor that I have on my necklace. This one, not really anything special, I just went for the adventurer character. Kind of looking at my character as sort of the guy that explores the environments a little bit more and tries to find little jobs or missions or targets to go after. Then you have Sydney's character, who I kind of went for with the thief. So I originally just gave her kind of like the stealthy rogue look, and I'm like, well, obviously that's perfect for thievery. So I made her the one that actually steals objects and brings them back, and I actually based her look here off of Undertale, which I wrote down in notes because she's a very big fan of that game. So I went with the color pattern kind of of the girl from that. And I love like the war paint that she has around the eyes. Kind of like when Batman takes off his cowl and you see the, the black paint around his eyes. I wanted to give that to her. And then of course, you got the Queen Bee, the leader of Arch. Like I said, I wanted to give her kind of a witchcraft feel. And by the way, putting in a fucking hellhound was chef's fucking kiss. This is Hunter. Like I said, I kind of took inspiration from Hercules on him, and so he's got the, like, very mythical, large, broad, strong but clean, you know? Every time that there's a Greek god, you know, they've got not much detail, and they look very 
they're very clean and refined and I tried to go for that with him and he, if you guys can't tell I've got this belt back here and the idea for that was actually I thought of kind of like what they have for weightlifters so I thought of giving him like a large brown belt to wear around just like that another thing too which saved me time but also does kind of add to the lore of this is if you look here it's kind of hard to tell with all of like the filters and shadows and overlay and stuff if you look at every single category of equipment in this they're all actually the same color so like all the body armor is the same color you have Baylor's body armor there along with Hunter's shoulder guard and arm guard and then you actually have my characters full arm guard right there and they're all I actually made them all the same color but then you also have all of the backpacks are the same color so like this backpack is the same color as that one the straps of the of the bags are all the same color as well because it's a larger operation they actually like have that equipment available for them instead of them having to bring their own along with the gloves too I went for kind of like a gray or brown for the gloves when I finished this I just paused took a step back I cried a little bit, I did. What I had planned in my head originally is nowhere near the level that this is, in my opinion. And this isn't me bragging about how good my art looks, this is coming from the standpoint of me being happy with how it looks. This is the best drawing I've ever made. Like you have Zeke was here, and Zeke was here looks really good from a technical standpoint because you actually have a character working in an environment, and it's a nice simple piece. It has its place, and it's great for that place, I think. If you just want a piece that has fucking everything thrown at the window and anything possible done with it, you have it. I think the reason that this hits home so much for me is, one, because this is a piece that I've wanted to make for a long time, just in general though, because I've always wanted to do something of making me and my cousins uh, kind of action heroes. But the fact that the original drawing is actually what sparked my entire change and my entire journey into making my art better. And with that knowledge, I made this. I'm so happy with how far I've come. I don't have much else to say. I'm just marveling at this. Unfortunately, I think I have run out of things to say. I hope that you guys learned something from this whole video. I hope that the tips that I provided along the way will eventually help you in some manner. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was Carter Sandman with Sandbox Illustration. Check in the description for links to more of my content. Make sure to like the video and comment on it and subscribe for weekly art-related videos. Have fun, dudes.